Greetings and salutations, and welcome back to Quest for Glory 3, Wages of War. Now, before we get started, um, a quick warning. Um, due to a scheduled power cut where I live, uh, happening in a little under an hour's time, this is going to be a slightly short stream. Um, <clears throat> and uh, since the exact time of the power cut, well, may sneak up on me, um, if the, uh, the stream or VOD just, just suddenly cuts off out of nowhere, that's probably what happened. Um, <clears throat> also see that I have some bitrate issues, so we'll have to see how that goes moving forward. Anyway, so there it is. Uh, so let's get on with it. So when last we, uh, when last we played, yes, we were at the heart of the world. Oh, I do love this scene. We just acquired some magic wood, um, which we can use uh, to get our, our magic staff um, if we get back to Tana. So, that is my plan. Essentially, I intend to head back to Sambani village. Um, I think we'll, fi we'll find that an event has occurred there. And uh, thence on to Tana, where we should get time dependent, because as I said, um, Time is a bit limited tonight due to the scheduled power outage. But uh, if we get there in time, I'm hoping to have one or both um, of two of our magic-related side quests um, happen today. Anyway, we'll see how things go. We still have to get all the way to Tana. It's quite a long way away from the heart of the world. Yes, yeah, so... And just wait for our character to walk. Unfortunately, oh wait, hold on, what am I doing? I should be able to run. There we go, that's more like it. And a little more in keeping with <laughs> today's time limit. Now, but still, some stream is better than no stream, I feel. This is definitely where I uh, feel the desire for some sort of fast travel option. Oh. Audio's playing up a little bit by the sound of it. Sorry about that. Oh, audio's playing up horribly right now. Oh, I think I know why it is. And there's not a lot that I can do about it. Uh, all right. I'll try to cut things shorter by keeping frequent saves in relatively safe spots so that we don't have to rewalk we have a reason to uh, reload. Let's see what we're up against. Ooh, Lippin' Man. Okay, I'm just going to reload that. Off we go. I'm going to try something. Let's just see what happens. Um, maybe saving's going to be too quick. Uh, too slow, rather. Uh, trying to figure out the the best way to cut time here. Oh, we ran straight into something. I was one of these guys. These guys are easy. If you don't actually hit the, the enemy. Bad fireball sprite, not my favorite ever, but it does the job. There we go, and that's him done. <clears throat> These guys don't have loot, so we'll just move on. Here I do want to make a save. Um, Here we go. I'll try not to rush through any of the actual um, fun stuff, but 
What are we up against? Oh, it's just another of you guys. Okay, I can live with that. Wow, he came onto me. He came quickly, didn't he? Oh, spit some, he spat some poison at me. That's not very, uh, not very polite. Shouldn't spit at people. Again, some really lovely art of this winged cobra. I don't know why the back of the wing is uh, transparent, but it is. Oh, that audio. Um, check on something quickly while we travel. Already another. Ah, one of these guys. Uh, I'm just going to restore. Okay, so once again we fight one of these guys. Come on, there we go. Ah, missed. That should do it, there we go, and he's done. Should have done last time and save so we don't have to uh, deal with him or with that section of jungle again on our way back uh, this is one thing that I will say against quest for glory 3 I don't like random encounters like this um, so that's not my favorite part of the game Got quite far that time oh and it's just a croc I can live with a croc I mean not live with a croc that would be Awkward and potentially uncomfortable, I feel. But I can live with the croc being the enemy that turned up. And one more, and he's done. This guy we will loot since these guys actually do carry a little bit of coin. Five royals, that's actually not bad. Now we're practically at the edge, so I'm going to take a chance and just try to make it to the, there we go, to the next map and then save. The village is right there, but we, I mean, we could run into a, a what's it, a running death uh, Saurus um, trying to get there. Nope, looks like we made it. Excellent. Habari Buana, have you heard the news of the village? A prisoner has been captured. Aha, and that's the event that I was expecting. You say hello to the elder. Mzuri Buana. So, what is this about a prisoner? The prisoner is being held in the cage behind the hut of the Libon. Our warriors are most proud that they have caught a leopard man. Ah, they caught a leopard man, did they? The Leopard Man be sneaky and very hard to capture. The Simbani warriors have been most smart to capture this prisoner. Please excuse my stumbling over my words, it seems. Cage? The Leopard Man is being kept in a special cage. The cage will not let any magic work and the Leopard Man cannot escape. Hmm. The warriors? The warriors captured the Leopard Man early this morning before the dawn. They were guarding the herds when the near the jungle when they, <clears throat> when they hear the Leopard Man get caught in a trap. Herds? This time of year, the cattle herds often graze near the jungle. There is much more for the cattle to eat and much more danger from the jungle beasts. The jungle? The jungle is so full of beasts, the warriors go with the herds to guard them. And this trap? I have heard that the leopard man be caught in one of the traps of the little people of the jungle. Our warriors got the leopard man before he could get out of the trap. Are the li little people? The little people of the jungle are not brave and will not face an enemy alone. They hunt only trapped or sleeping victims and hide in the jungle during the day. I think 
I'm not sure, but I think the little people of the jungle uh, might be the monkey folk, uh, such as we met uh, previously. We met Manu, a little monkey, uh, who we freed from a trap, funnily enough, and who, uh, who spoke to us. Okay, so a leopard man has been caught. This sounds interesting. Let's go have a look at uh, once this save finishes. Let's go see what's going on. <clears throat> Excuse me, you heard me drinking, but do stay hydrated. Aha. Hello! Look at the prisoner the warriors caught. Now maybe we can make the leopard man give back our spear of death. Hello, Yusufu. Mzuri, Prince of Shipier. Tell me about this prisoner. Look at the magic of the leopard men. It turns them into animals. That is the way of magic. The prisoner tried many spells to get out of the cage, but the cage stops the magic. It is good. Capture. The warriors found the leopard man when the light first filled the sky. He be trying to spy upon our village. The Simbani be too smart for him and he be caught. Spear. Maybe we trade this leopard man for the spear of death. Maybe we make him tell us where his village hides. Either way, the Zimbani will gain back the Spear of Death. Yusufu? I helped the warriors drag this prisoner to the cage. The Leopard Man fought very hard, but we are Simbani. Hmm. You see a Leopard Man prisoner in the cage. The prisoner snarls back at you. Hmm, tell me about your village. No, they're, they're just snarling at us. Oh. Goodbye, Yasufu. I think maybe we should go talk to the Libon about this. I'll try and plug in my battery. That might help the audio a bit. Okay. God gestures for you to enter. Nice. Do a quick save here. So I think we can get this, some of these dialogues, well, we can do imperfectly at them. We say Habari to the Libon. Mzuri, young hero. Uh, tell me about this prisoner. This leopard man spy was caught at the edge of the savanna. We will keep him caged until the spear of death be returned, or when we, return, or when we learn from him where the leopard man village hides. Drum prison. I don't think there's anything else for us to. Yeah, we've we've been through this. Okay, say goodbye. The leopard man prisoner will be guarded at all times. So far, he will not talk and will not tell us where his village hides. When he does, the Sambani will destroy his village and return with the spear of death. If you can find the leopard man village. For from speaking to the prisoner, then the Simbani will have their Spear of Death back and the war will be over. Go then and thus bring peace to this land. Hmm, not the way we want to do this. Uh, now let me check something. Do we have... Yeah, we don't yet have a certain item. We're going to need to go to Tana for it. So, that's not a bad, terrible thing. Um, I wonder... If I go there now, will there be someone else, I wonder? Yes, okay, it's just a random random Sabani warrior guarding at the moment. Uh, and what time is it? It is now getting kind of late. I think it's probably too early to talk to you, yeah, Uhura. No. Okay, so let's rest a bit. Um... I want to, uh, I want to spend the night here in the Sabani uh, village. And then we'll set out in the new day for Tana, I intend. Okay, it's still random warrior. And see if we can rest again. Ah, there we go. Let's see if we can get into Uhura's hut now. Nope, not yet. It's still... Ah, there we go. It was still a little too early. Welcome again, speaker of peace. Maybe you'll be here to speak about the prisoner? The Leopard Man be caught good. 
Hello, Uhura. You say Habari to Uhura. Mzuri friend. So, tell me about this prisoner. Everybody be talking about the prisoner. The warriors be plenty proud. Now they have shown strength against the enemy. Now they can learn the secret of where the Leopard Man village hides. Only one trouble. Leopard Man prisoner not speak to tell secret. Speak? All the Leopard Man prisoner be speaking is in the tongue of the animal. Maybe cannot be speaking until Leopard Man become man again. Secret? It's hard to attack an enemy when you don't know where to attack. Not knowing where to find the Leopard Man village will not stop the warriors for long. Soon the warriors will be searching the jungle for the secret. I think many be, be dying soon. Hmm. Jungle? The jungle be no place for the Simbani. Warriors fight best when be standing together. The jungle make the warrior go alone. The plants grab at the spear and it cannot be thrown. Warriors do not fight good in the jungle. Death? There are many dangers in the jungle. The Simbani be not knowing what the dangers look like and so get caught. So, too, the Leopard Man be bad enemy. Their claws be very sharp and they use magic. Hmm. So, whatever happens, um, however it goes, if the Simbani go into the jungle after the Leopard Men, chances are a lot of Simbani are going to die. Tell me about this cage, Uhura. That cage be special cage. No magic can get out of the cage. The Leopard Man prisoner not able to use magic against the Simbani. Leopard Man? Remember, the Leopard Man be a magic user. He be a man in the shape of the leopard. Take away his magic and the leopard be a man. Nudge, nudge, hint, hint. We've already uh, taken the first steps, by the way, on resolving that particular issue. But as I said, we have to go back to Tana for it. Uh, and Yusufu? Yusufu be the son of the Libon. He will be a fine warrior soon. And the guard? The cage will be guarded all the time to be sure that the prisoner cannot be free. And yourself? Mzuri, my friend. Now maybe you can get Leopard Man to tell you where the village hides so you can get back our Spear of Death. That is the sort of the plan. Goodbye, Uhura. Kwaheri, and good night. Okay, so let's run to our, uh, our own bed. It's a nice shield. Um, right, and let's sleep until morning. Okay, let's head out. I'll check on the prisoner just once and uh, see uh, if anything's changed there just yet. <clears throat> Excuse the coughing, please. Ah, who is looking, watching over the prisoner? Good day, Prince of Shipia. Now I be standing guard over the prisoner to be certain that the Leopard Man does not escape. I have been thinking that there is much we could learn from this Leopard Man if he would become a man again. Perhaps you can find something in Tana that will break the spell. Nudge, nudge, hint, hint. Hello, Uhura. It always be good to see you, my friend. I like Uhura. The prisoner tried a few spells earlier and now just sits and snarls. I do not think this one will get away soon. Yeah, maybe sooner than you think. The warriors did not have much trouble overcoming this leopard man. The prisoner is pretty scrawny even for a leopard man. Hmm. Interesting that. Uhura? I will only be standing guard here for a little while more. Someone else will guard here soon. Fair enough. Uh... Nah, okay. Let's say our goodbyes. Okay, and then we're off to Tana. Habari Buana. Mzuri Buana. I don't really need to ask about anything else. Let's say goodbye. And head out. Oops, there we go. Head out to the savannah. Save. So we've done stuff and we uh, could very well end up with uh, an encounter. Should also try to remember, maybe on the way back from Tana, I want to try to remember to camp out. No, maybe not on the way back, so I mean, that means going out basically at night. Um, maybe, either on the way there or on the way back. 
Ooh, we've gone quite a long way without us without an encounter. I'm just gonna save that. Come on. Ah, we had some sort of encounter. What are we up against? Ah, kittens. It's a running death dinosaur. Don't want to deal with that. Well, this is why I saved when uh, I realized we were so far out. Far out, man. Wow. Hello, running death dinosaur. Let's try that again, but without the running death dinosaur, ideally. Huh. A dinosaur. A big dinosaur. A very big and hungry dinosaur. This running relic from the Jurassic period is endangering your species. I didn't remember whether we'd actually looked at them yet. Okay, let's try that again. Come on, almost there. Okay, we made it to the next screen. Good. Save that. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to. Yeah, I think I'm going to camp just outside Tana this time. I have a drop more to drink. Excuse me if you hear that. Ah, it's Nimlep. Nice. I haven't fought Nimlep yet in this this episode. Nimlep, Nimlep to you too. See, they talk. They know exactly what I'm saying, I'm sure. Especially since all I'm saying is I'm left. Yep, there we go. And then Mlep is dead. Alas, no, uh, no loot from left from Mleps. Um, but so it goes. There's actually not a lot of looting done in the uh, the enemies of this game. Come to think of it. Um, you know, in Quest for Glory 2 you could get claws from ghouls, you could get stingers from scorpions, you could get money from jackalmen and bandits. Quest for Glory 1 you could get claws from cheetors, you could get money from goblins as I recall. Probably other, perhaps other things as well that I'm forgetting. In this game you get money from crocs, you get horns from running death dinosaurs and also it might be an emblem but that's way too soon. Um, you get yeah, you get money from crocs, you get horns from running death dinosaurs, and maybe you get money from leopard men. I'm not sure. Ah, uh, it's one of you guys. I was tempted to accept that fight, um, just on the grounds of making some progress. It is insistent that we have a fight. Right, it keeps giving us a fight there, doesn't it? Well, we're not having a fight with a running death dinosaur, and I don't want to spend the time running from screen to screen. Wow. I'm going to try something here. Uh, what if I do that? Just walk to an arbitrary spot. Exit. And then try to continue. I'm hoping that will perturb the random number generator behind things. Ah, okay, it's an Mlep. We've made some progress, so I'm going to take this fight. Go. Another left down. It's interesting to think. I've only seen these giant ants moving um, singly. You don't seem to see them trooping along the way you do most ants. Um, are these giant ants hive creatures like standard size ants? Or, or are they solo ants for some reason?
Come on, hero, we can do it. You just ate the last of your rations. You'd better get some more food soon. But we made up to our... Here we go. This is where I wanted to be. Good. It's not a specific spot, mind you, um, for what I want. But uh, <clears throat> if I recall correctly, we have to camp on the screen. I don't know whether we have to be near Tana, but I know that it does happen if we do... Uh, we camp... Um, yeah, we might have to do this from the menu, from the map screen, though. Hold on, that's, that's an enemy encounter, that's not what I want. Um, so let's restore. I'm going to try actually making a proper camp, because we didn't have the option to make camp when we stopped like that. But uh, yes, here we go, this is what I want, the option to make camp. And of course we want to build a fire. A fire that might attract... Ah, friendly attention, perhaps. Right. So, let's have a, let's have a rest, and then... Another rest. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, so we have the option to sleep till morning. I'm going to save now, because I don't know whether this is... Um, whether the event that I'm looking for is determined randomly or not. Um, if it is, we might have to take a couple of shots at it. Um, but I think there's a good chance it'll just happen because we're in the right place at the right sort of time. <clears throat> but let's see. Aha! This is it. You hear a strange noise approaching from the west. Yep, yeah, and this is it. With incredible reflex action, the Earth Pig narrowly avoids an almost certain death as he ducks the attack of a violet giraffe. Did you see the size of that thing? Those purple giraffes sure get big around here. Don't ask me what accent that is. I don't know. New around here, eh? Bet you've never seen an earth pig before. Arn's the name. Arn Sacknusen. Diggins the game. I'm a miner, you know. Yes, one of the world-renowned Artvark miners. Remember our slogan, we dig earth pigs. Catchy, ain't it? So here I am, hunting giant ants to bring back to the mines. Do a lot of it, you know. Hunting, that is. I bet I've explored every inch of East Rikana. I know every anthole and termite mound there is, there is from savannah to jungle. Um, so yes, this is Arn, Arn the Aardvark. And yes, by the way, uh, Earth Pig is a translation of Aardvark. Um, if I'm not much mistaken. Just save here. Uh, this is the most unique individual you've met in a long time. Well, hello. You greet the Earth Pig. Hello, human. Hope you don't mind me sitting here a bit. Getting to be a mite thirsty what with the hunting giant, giant ants and all. No, that's 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 fine, Arn. Uh, tell me about the savannah. The savannah is kind of peaceful at night, except for all those purple giraffes and green hippos. They get worse as it gets near to daytime. I think it has something to do with my drink. Yep, they're attracted to it. I'd offer them some, but I'm afraid I'll never get rid of them then. So anyway, the savannah. Well, except for the Simbani village, Tana, the magic pool, and the venomous vines, there's not much to the savannah except gr grass and trees, and rocks, and monsters, and giant ants and termites, and purple giraffes and fluorescent green hippos. Uh-huh. Uh, well, tell me about the Simbani village. Don't have much to do with the Simbani. They aren't much interested in gold and gems. They just care about cows. So I suppose these guys are the dwarves of the setting. You know, they're, like, they're the standard stereotypical fantasy dwarf, except that they're aardvarks instead. Uh, Tana? So anyway, we aardvarks come to Tana once a year to trade off the worthless gold and gems for pots and pans and bottles and things. Aardvarks don't need much, but we do like a few amenities. Uh, venomous vines. Oh, there we go. Somewhere to the southeast of Tana is a group of rocks which surrounds the venomous vines. Don't get too close or the vines will get you if you don't watch out. Yep, we've already been there in fact. In the magic pool? Let me think. The magic pool is somewhere around the Simbani village if I remember correctly. Peaceful place to stay, but the giant ants avoid the place. Not much point in me going there, seeing as how I'm hunting ants. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, miners. 
We aardvarks mine, mine most anything that comes out of the ground. Termites, diamonds, gold. Of course, gold and gems aren't worth as much as a good termite, but you can't tell a human that. They'd rather have the gold. Can you imagine that? Ah, uh, I suppose you could, being a human and all. Funny things, you humans. I'm not, I'm not sure I entirely disagree, but anyway. Uh, although, in all fairness, things like gold and diamond do have their uses. You know, they, um, they use electronics and cutting and all of that. Anyway, uh, jungle. Yep, it's a jungle out there, full of strange creatures and weird plants. Got to really watch your step in the jungle. You never know if you're about to step on something, or something's about to step on you. Besides, all the jungle looks alike, except for the giant tree, and the waterfall, and the leopard man village, and the lost city. Uh-huh, yeah, giant tree. Yes, Suri, that is one humongous tree. I explored it once. That's my job, explorer. That's why they call me Uncanny Arn, you know. Don't, don't suppose you did at that. At any rate, one night I decided to climb that giant tree to see what was what. Didn't see much. Just some strange glowing light and a bunch of plants. Not an ant to be found. Mm-hmm. The waterfall? Well, if you keep travelling to the east, you can't miss the waterfall. Can't cross it, neither. There's supposed to be some people that knows their way across, but I never met them. I think we met one of them. A leopard men? Well, this is just hearsay and speculation, but there's supposed to be a tribe of shape-changing humans living out in the jungle. I never actually seen the village, though. I have seen the leopard men at times. I ignore them, and they usually ignore me. Lately, though, they've been a bit upset about something. They started taking pot shots at me with their magic. So, mostly I avoid the jungle. And the lost city? Out in the jungle, a ways east of the waterfall, lies the ruins of a lost civilization. There's nothing much left there except the buildings and some ape men living in them. Nowadays, I've seen some really strange things there. Didn't get close enough to make anything out, though. Couldn't get across the waterfall. Earth pigs don't have much to do with water. Gets our fur wet. Mm hmm, makes sense. Uh, and uh, aardvarks. We earth pigs are good at digging. That's why we took up mining. We dig up diamonds and gold all year round in Sol Mitana when the caravans come. Haven't seen any caravans lately though. Must be all that trouble out at the lost city. At any rate, we aardvarks pretty much mine our own business. Mine our own business, get it? It's a minor joke, eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like that. Uh, lost city, I think we've, yeah, we've already read that. Uh, trouble. A couple of months ago, we earth pigs felt a tremor in the force. Magical force, that is. Uh, aardvarks are real sensitive about tremors, you know. Comes of being close to the earth and all. Anyhow, there was this magical disturbance which means trouble to miners. Never know when a hole will collapse because of some, da some disturbance. So, the Aardvark Alliance sent out someone to investigate. Who are, you going to, who are they going to call? Arn, of course. Arn Sagnusen, world famous explorer. So I climbed down from the mountains to see what I can see. Well, I didn't see much happening until I got near the, to the old lost city. Lots of strange things going on. Weird lights, ugly monsters sort of thing. It looks to be pretty much above ground though. Not likely to affect the Aardvark mines. Well, that's, that's good at least, I suppose. Uh, and this drink of yours? This? Well, I'd offer you some, but I don't think you can handle it. You see, it's distilled from giant ants. It's a special recipe, I know. I call it my formic formula. <laughs> formic, you know, form formic acid, dance. Don't they teach you anything in school these days? I got it at least. Giraffes? Funny how them purple gir girama thingies only come out at night, ain't it? Wonder where they go in the daytime. Kinda hard to hide, particularly with the glowing pink spots giving them away. Uh, oh, no, I, I don't think... I don't think that's quite what... You know what, never mind. Goodbye, Arn. You tell the Earth Pig goodnight. Okay, I can take a hint. You want to go to sleep, right? Not interested in talking to an Earth Pig, right? You humans are all alike. Well, thank you for talking to us, Arn. I do like that encounter. That is a fun one. You can excuse me if you uh, hear me drinking. You awaken as the sun begins to rise. Um, I want to try something. Ah, there we go. We used the calm spell to put out our fire. And we're off. And oh, we're off. We should have been kept in the fridge. And we are 
in Tana. Ah, oh, that is such a such a cool image. Anyway, here we are, born to be kings with the princes of the universe, or something like that. Ah, uh, let's see. It is a quarter to ten, so I'm going to let's see. Is there anything that I need to do? In I don't think there's anything I need to do in um, in the bazaar right now. I'm tonight. I'm going to want to do something. Ah, hi! I've made myself the. <clears throat> I've got myself and things together and made you some nifty dispel potions. Um, hi, <laughs> um, Salim. Oh, hey, good to see you, man. Um, something about this potion. I have the potions ready and waiting for you whenever you want them. Those seem like they should be helpful with the uh, with the, uh, the 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 leopard man. Not so. Uh, so let's make a purchase. Uh, I want a dispel potion. Um, I don't know how many I need. Do I need? I want at least two. Oh, he only has three. Let's buy all of them. Uh, hold on. Um, okay, I have the money. Good. Um, look, Salim, I I went and fetched a lot of these things. Uh, so I, I feel like a d discount is called for. Hey, money isn't everything, but it does pay the rent. That's not gonna. Ca that's not enough cash to pay for the ingredients, let alone this pad. Salim, I gave you the ingredients. I hate to seem mund material mundane, but I do need more money than that. You've got a deal. Okay, that's better at least. Well, making a dispel potion did take up many of my ingredients and time, but what is that measured against happiness? Since you made my fortune with my future, <clears throat> since you made my future with Julina, I give you the gift of the dispel potions. Oh, hey, I think we got them for free. Nice, because we told him about Julina. That's neat. Uh, all right. Uh, do we? Let me see how many of these we have. We have five healing pulls, so we're fine for that. Three mana pulls. We don't have stamina pulls, but I don't feel like we really need them at the moment. Uh, so let's say our goodbyes. Uh, live long and prosper! Oh, sorry, I missed one there. Sorry about that. I don't think I was getting his voice right in. Oop, pardon me. Anyway. And let's go and talk with uh, Rakesh and Kreesha. What time is it, by the way? Oh, it's still morning. Good. Uh, I meant in-game. Of course, I'm also keeping an eye on the time out here, um, where it is 21.47. Ah! Creature! Greetings, wizard. I can sense the presence of magical wood. You have done well. Now is the time for you to create your magical staff. Stand beside the pentagram and we shall begin. Upon my words, you will cast all of your spells save one upon the magical wood. Do not cast the trigger spell, however, or you shall unleash all the magical energy within and destroy everything around here. Hmm. Let us begin the ritual of the magical staff. Please, place your magical wood in the middle of the pentagram. Yeah, nice staff. Looks good. Hear me, your powers, and draw near. I call upon that. Uh, from thought to wisdom, from wisdom to strength, from strength to love, from love to will, from will to wisdom. Pretty. I call upon the circle. Contain the power within. Nice. Now, O wizard, ye shall bind thy powers into the wood. Cast your spells upon the staff. Again, cast your spell. Again, cast your spell. Again, cast your spell. By the powers which bind all magic, bind the power within this staff. Bind this staff to its master. Wizard, draw upon thy power and summon thy staff. Ta-da! The wizard has spoken. The staff has been made. The spell is complete. Congratulations, wizard. You now have your own magic staff. Its power is great and you must use it wisely. You're getting really hungry. Oh, that is the other... That is one reason that we have for uh, going to the bazaar. We should go and get some rations. 
Welcome, young hero. You will find us in the back parlor. So, we now have uh, Magic Staff. Um... Save quickly. Oh, kittens. Uh, yeah, I better go and get food. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go to the inn quickly and eat. Um, better run. We should at least get some food in our stomach and then we can go to the bazaar and then we can go and talk with Rakesh and Kresha. There we go. Right. It is a day of sorrows, golden sunshine. Khatib Makaram has died today. You greet the welcome woman. Mahaba Effendi. You are most welcome, yea, he who is polite. Uh, so, yes, uh, Khatib is the fellow who we spoke with, I think it was at the beginning of the previous session. Um, the survivor, the sole survivor of um, the attempted peace mission to the, to the Leopard Men. Um, who was deeply scarred by the experience and hounded by memories and potentially worse than memories. Um, sorry, just got a notification. Right. So, seems that he has died, I'm afraid. Khatib Mukaram, <clears throat> sorry, Khatib Mukaram was found lying by the edge of the river this morning. None know why he was there or how he died. Hmm. Rumours? I have heard whispers that Khatib's ghost was seen rising from the body in a dark cloud when they found the body. But I do not believe this. Hmm. Khatib? Khatib would not rise as a ghost. Even now, his car has been weighed by Anubis, and he will stand at Sekhmet's side. Car? Car is the soul that will live forever. Anubis? Anubis is the jackal-headed god which, which holds the scale of truth and weighs the car of the dead. A very um, Egyptian-influenced um, area, Tana. Um, but it might be worth remembering that business of a dark... Um, a dark spectre rising from his body. That uh, that might be worth remembering a little. Um, probably next session, I'm guessing, judging by the time. Um, let's order a meal. I will bring your meal right out. Ah, oh, again, excuse me if you heard me drinking, but do stay hydrated. I'm quite thirsty tonight, it would seem. Here is your feast. May it please you. Hmm, this food looks strange, but smells delicious. You pay the welcome woman for your meal. Be welcome, and may you enjoy it. You enjoy your meal. It was very very tasty, even if it was a bit strange. Okay, now that we've done that... Um, I'm going to make a point of going and getting some food, I think. Um, let's see, the question is, what are we going to buy? What uh, rations shall we get? I had completely forgotten to keep any sort of eye on how many rations I had, had especially since we just had tons when we were in Quest for Glory 2. Uh, well, what do we still have in our inventory? Not a lot. Looks like we did use up the fruit. Um, and anything else that we had. So we have some options. We have fruit here from the fruit vendor. And we have meat from the meat vendor further down. And there's fish from, uh, believe it or not, the fish vendor. Um, yeah, there's the fish guy. And uh, if we go further down here. Oh, hi. No, don't, don't need rope, thank you. Um, and down here we have the meat vendor. Um, I'm going to go with fish and fruit, I think. Uh, where's my purse? Mostly fresh fish. Very fine dried fish. 
You'll be needing the good vitamins to be building your muscles, if any. Uh, let's buy some fish from this filler. Dried fish. Uh, I want a bargain. Uh, let's try 30 royals. Uh, 30 cents, sorry. If I sell my fish for such a price, my sister will be very angry. You sell your fish too cheap, says she. But for you, Effendi, I will make a deal. 47. Okay, he's, he's come down a bit. I can work with that. 38. It is a very fine dried fish for such a low price, Effendi, but you are a good bargainer, says I. Oh, thank you. Um, let's go for 15, I think. I don't, uh, actually, I don't know that I have enough. Uh, I have two hundred, just under two hundred royals. If it's ten, no. If it's a hundred cents to a royal, oh, then I have plenty. Okay, so let's. Thank you, thank you very much, Effendi. May you never have a day without fish. You put away your purchases and put you pay for your purchases rather than put them away in your backpack. Okay, and then let's go get some fruit. It's good, to, a good idea to have a range of foods in one's diet, you know, and. Uh, Plus, it's not really healthy to eat nothing but meat. Um, anyway, let's have some fruit. Fruit, fruit, fine fruit. One bite will keep you in good health, Effendi. Um, it's bargain. Uh, 37. Would you, wealthy beyond dreams, quibble with a poor man over a few commons? Uh, 39. Very well, Effendi. You will make me a poor man while you enjoy yourself with my fruit. And let's get 15 of these as well. While well, we're at it. A thousand thanks, and may you enjoy each delicious bite of your purchase. Right, so we should now have some food to our name. Yeah, 15 fruit and 15 dried fish. Good. It is now four minutes to ten, which means that uh, I should be closing up. Uh, yeah, I don't need to talk with you guys anymore. Not right now. Um, not at all for the rest of the game, I don't think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Rakesh and Kreesh's place so that I have that little reminder of... Um, oh, no, let's stop out here, I think. Let's stop out here. So, uh, let's make a save, of course. Don't want to lose our progress. Uh, yes, that's the one. There we go. Right. And with that, let me say thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've had fun. I very much have. Um, sorry it is a slightly short stream to, um, this time, but so it goes. It's be rather difficult for me to stream without electricity to uh, to run the router and uh, thus connect me to the internet. So again thank you for joining me, stay well and goodbye.